Greetings everyone. This is an assignment 3 tutorial on hypothesis testing. This is part of the course uh, Applied Retail Research offered by Ted Rogers School of Retail Management. My name is Murtaza Haider. So the first question is to determine using one mean t-test and the question is to determine if the average number of cars or vans per household in the UK is exactly one. Uh, so we need to test this hypothesis. What I have done here is instead of solving the exact problem I have used uh, a data set to illustrate how you can go about it. So it's not the same so please do not try to look for these variables these are different variables but illustrating the same problem so the goal is to determine one mean test now let's say using some data from England that the average weekly household chicken consumption in in England is about 1.15 kilograms so on average um, a household consumes 1.15 kilograms of chicken and the the test that we need to do is to see if this is true now we have a data set called the trust data set and using that data set we found that the average consumption of chicken is actually in in our sample 1.75 kilogram so we need to test our hypothesis which is stated here is that the null hypothesis that the average consumption of chicken is in fact 1.15 kilogram and the alternative hypothesis is that no it's not 1.15 it could be higher or lower than 1.15 and hence it's a two-tailed t-test so we are checking this testing this hypothesis against the observed data from our sample which is 1.75 kilogram so the you could see here the observed value from the sample is 1.75 and the assumption that assumed population mean is 1.15 and we divide it by the standard error 0.28 and we get the z statistics 2.14 now we'll get to why we're using Z statistics in a little while later but this value needs to be compared with the critical values the Z 2.14 and it's a two-tailed test where we're testing mean is not equal to 1.15 would imply it's either less than 1.15 kilogram or more than 1.15 kilogram so this level or the 95 percent confidence level suggests that if the value is less than 1.96 minus 1.96 or, or is greater than plus 1.96 then uh, we can reject the null hypothesis so let's move forward and see where this stands it's you know here we see that the um, test statistics lies in the rejection area that is it's beyond 1.96 and therefore if you were to use the SPSS you say analyze compare means one sample t-test and then select the variable here and then that variable here would provide the observed value you go. so once you estimate the test this is the SPSS output and the p-value which uh, SPSS would always say significance level and two-tailed is 0 0.032 so the null hypothesis is rejected because the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05 therefore uh, we reject the null hypothesis which is that the mean value was 1.15 so that's the value we tested and um, and the observed value therefore was different so just one final word that if you were testing the um, that the average number of cars or vans per household in the UK is uh, one then you put one here um, and the actual value would come from the variable uh, a124 and when I say actual I mean the observed value reported in the sample is actually captured by captured by variable one a124 and one would be placed here to test the value the second question is about the uh, well the part B in this first question is to see if the distribution of the mean is 
uh, normal that is the variable a124 has a normal distribution and the way to check it is that you um, in SPSS select graphics and under graphics look for histogram and then select the variable that you would like to plot for histogram and also select the option of drawing a normal uh, curve on the data set and that would address the question of uh, 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 the histogram now once you have plotted the histogram it would give you the impression if the the, the theoretical curve and the underlying data um, follow or appear to follow the same distribution then good um, and uh, otherwise you may also want to test the um, validity of the normality assumption using Kolmogorov Smirnov test and I will call it KS test because I, my Russian is not that great so uh, the the null hypothesis for KS test is that the random sample is drawn and um, in SPSS when you are administering this KS test you can test for normality or Poisson distribution or uh, a uniform distribution or the exponential distribution so here we will test normal distribution and later we will test for a Poisson distribution Poisson curve or distribution the same anyhow um, and once the distribution and its parameters are known it becomes possible to test uh, estimate the parameters and the null hypothesis is that it's random data so next slide here you go analyze non-parametric tests and you click on one sample K values and the null hypothesis for KS test are as follows if the um, the null hypothesis is that the distribution is normal and the alternative hypothesis is that the distribution of the underlying variable is not normal and once you run the test and you look at the uh, asymptotic significance value and if it's less than 0 0.05 then you reject the normality assumption and if it's greater than 0 0.05 then you fail to reject the normality assumption again uh, remember that the rule of thumb or is that if the value for p-value is less than 0 0.05 you reject the normality assumption if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 you do not or f you fail to reject the null hypothesis please skip question 1c um, it's uh, at this stage we'll just not do it and we'll address it later the last part of question 1 is to compare the mean expenditures um, which is variable P611 between the lowest income quartile and the highest income quartile using the variable ink ranges or income ranges and and to test are these uh, difference in s expenditures significantly different or are they um, can we assume uh, that their variances are same or not so, and if we make a different assumption what impact would it have so here we go the uh, SPSS command for this is the independent sample t-test and um, once you get to this basically you say analyze compare means independent sample t-test you get to this dialog box and then you select the variable EFS and notice here that under the grouping variable I have used the income ranges 1 and 4 because the we are interested in the highest and the lowest quartile and the income ranges are 1 2 3 and 4 we divide the income ranges into lowest low and high and highest quartile and 1 and 4 represent the extreme so they are here and then we enter OK and then we get the value for the test and if the p-value is less than 0 0.05 you will assume um, you will uh, um, use the same principle that you reject the null hypothesis which is that the both uh, spendings for the lowest and the highest quartile is the same and if you get um, a p-value of greater than 0 0.05 then you fail to reject the uh, the null hypothesis and in this case we also need to see if the variances are equal and at SPSS you can use the Levine test and if the significance for Levine test is 0 0.05 or below then you cannot assume equal variances if they are if the if the Levine test value is greater than 0 0.05 you will assume um, or equal variances 
so the SPSS output it pretty much looks like this I have reformatted it otherwise it's very long um, and I have just reformatted to, to make it a little bit more legible and this is the actual answer from from the uh, uh, question you could see here that the uh, significance value is less than 0 0.05 and hence you cannot assume equal variances so you use the t-test here and here the t-test is minus 10.03 and you could see that um, the significance value in both cases regardless of the assumption about equal variances is less than zero and hence you cannot assume that uh, the uh, spending is the same in the highest and lowest quartiles and therefore you reject the null hypothesis